Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town. And as you guys have probably noticed, I had a has-been hotel video made a couple weeks ago that I privated in about a day. If you'd like to know what happened with that, um, you can watch on. Otherwise, you can skip to this timestamp to get straight to the new video. So the reason I privated the video was because during a section where I was playing around with color palettes of the characters, I used this image from MovieWeb, which I believe to be official promo art for has-been hotel. Its source was shown as Amazon Studios, and it was accompanied by an interview with one of the cast. All the other images on the page were official. However, this is not from Amazon Studios, nor is it official. It was stolen from Zapfox and had its watermark removed. I want to thank everyone who commented to let me know, and fortunately Zapfox was really kind and understanding. I did not want to be another person online reposting the cropped version of their art, so I took the whole video down. For posterity, this is what the video was originally like. It was called Do the Hasbin Haters Have a Point, and it was inspired by the hate I saw Hasbin Hotel getting for its character designs and its color palettes, a point I make in the intro of the video. And lately I've been seeing some pretty severe criticism of Hasbin Hotel's character designs and art direction on Twitter. Like, this seems really harsh. The rest of the video, I'm talking about the critiques that I do agree with, such as the readability issue with everything being too red. Um, I explain a couple different possible solutions, like uh, tinting the background more purplish, or if it has to be red, um, just making it look paler so that the characters have an opportunity to stand out. The other possible solution was changing the color palettes of the characters themselves, um, which is the point at which I accidentally used Zap's art. Now for the last segment, I did do a quick lineup of the characters, which I introduced like this. So now I'm going to start my little like alternate universe if I was in charge of designing these characters for animation. And just to be clear, I'm glad that I am not. I'm glad that uh, Hasbin Hotel was made by a creator who is not me, who has their own style and vision for it, and it's their passion project. Uh, but regardless, I thought it would be interesting to see like the, the Lavender Town version of Hasbin Hotel's characters, and I'll kind of explain why I keep what I keep and why I change what I change as we move along. I had a quick unshaded lineup at the end, and then that was the whole video. So as those of you who watch my content regularly know, I like to do very high effort videos. I don't do just like commentary over other people's work. I usually like to have four to six fully shaded illustrations. For research, I do things like read an entire book and watch an entire movie, like I do for my By the Book series. And this video is not like that. The reason this video wasn't up to my usual standard wasn't because I didn't care about the topic, but because I was going through kind of a hard time, and honestly it was the best I could do under the circumstances. Now that I'm feeling better and everything's calmed down, I can try again, and that's what this video is. Just as a quick warning, now that I actually have watched the entire show instead of just three episodes, I actually have more issues with the character designs in the show. So if hearing some jokes and some light criticism about Hasbin Hotel is going to bum you out, please feel free to just skip this video and I will see you in the next one. Alright, to start out we have a character who is the Princess of Hell. She's the daughter of Satan and is a cheerful idealist. She loves to sing and dance and she has horns and hooves. And this is her in the show. Now all these facts about Charlie are things that you can find in the actual canon of the show, except for her hooves, which I don't believe I ever saw and I had to dig that out of the wiki. In general, I was surprised at how few of the like core important character design features that a lot of people had asked me to add were not represented in the show at all, or at least were very hard to notice if you weren't already looking for them. Um, but in general, I wanted to really focus on these characters as they are in the show itself. For me, Charlie is an extremely princessy character, and since she's literally a princess of hell, I wanted to kind of amplify that like cutesy, girly uh, side to her character design because it is such a big part of her character. She's incredibly bubbly and optimistic and kind of quirky, just like a modern day Disney princess. To make that princessiness more visual on her character, and also to break up her silhouette, which is very skinny and elongated like so many of the characters in this show, I decided to add mass by giving her a large skirt that sort of juts out quite dramatically. I also gave her princessy puff sleeves, though I made sure to keep the hellish and demonic color palette that Hasbin is so well known for by having it striped with black and white, and then I tried to keep in line with uh, her her like more hotel kind of concierge look that she has in not the pilot but in the main show um, and I kept that with the vest up top um, so I kind of wanted it to include everything her job at the hotel her princessiness with the shape as well as the colors that we originally associate with the show I also tried to boost up both her princessiness and her demonic nature uh, by giving her a tiara of horns which is an idea I had back in my original design video. 
I have these little tassels on the front that kind of look like upside down crosses, which I think also leads into the satanic and devilish side. This show is very focused not on like an underworld that's like more vague about the religious tones, like it's very rooted in Christianity, so I wanted to have some more satanic look to her design as well. I also decided to make the end of her hair, like after it's all bunched up together, sort of taper down into what kind of looks like a little demon tail. Um, and then I changed her shoes so it looked like she could fit hooves in them. I have to talk a little bit about how the wiki works and um, how so many fans let me know that it was important to them that I include a lore that's in the wiki um, but when you look at the references and that these are like loose tweets and streams from all different levels of the show's production i do want to say that not all of this is going to be canon and not all of this is going to be relevant to the final show Last time I had someone criticize me for having a design with her horns in it because he thought that she hides her horns out of respect for her father, but I couldn't find that in the pilot, the show, or in the wiki, so I don't know. I think it's literally a headcanon. <laughs> So needless to say, I might not include every bit of lore and um, every fandom theory into my designs, but I hope you like them anyway. I'm really happy with how Charlie turned out. Our next character is an ex-exorcist slash soldier. She had an eye violently removed. She's a fallen angel, themed after a moth, and she has a tough exterior, but she's kind. And here she is in the show. So I really wanted to amplify her soldiery nature, especially because um, it seems like her personality is supposed to be rather like tough and uh, severe. I do think that like watching the entire show, I didn't really get that sense from her. Her voice actress definitely gives off that impression and she kind of drags her feet when people ask her to do stuff, but in general, almost everything she does is really nice. And she's so patient with Charlie, it's actually insane. Um, I did find her a little lacking personality wise and I realized why when I looked at her wiki. Almost all of her likes and dislikes have to do with Charlie and I think that if Charlie was a male character I would find this characterization of Vaggie really frustrating because she truly is like just a girlfriend it feels like. Um, she has other traits and her backstory is actually pretty interesting but I feel like her actual presence in the show is almost always just to like worry about Charlie, help Charlie, and she doesn't really have any of her own center. Which again is not the end of the world, but it does make her a little harder to design. I decided to make her body type a little different than Charlie's, just like I did in my initial attempt. Um, I want her to look a little sturdier and more muscular because of her past. That super, super tiny wasp waist just doesn't scream to me that she used to be a killing machine. And because she seems to always approach every problem initially with like this combative stance, like she's ready to fight, I feel like she would still have that kind of um, structure to her body. I also just think it will make them look more interesting together as a couple if they don't have identical body types. I decided to go with almost kind of a medieval-y kind of soldier vibe. I love a female knight, especially like in a sapphic story, um, so I was definitely tempted to put her in that direction and that might have been a big amount of the inspiration for her. I also have this sort of like ribbon over her shoulders that is like this blood red color and I did that as sort of a hint um, to the fact that her wings were ripped off. Again, we don't want any sign that she had wings because it is a secret that she used to be an exorcist and she used to be an angel. So we definitely don't want any like literal symbols of wings or anything, but I think that this like tassel down the back would look cool, but then once you realize that it kind of represents the blood that flowed down when she had her rings, wings ripped off. I think that could be really, really cool. Some part of me thinks she's kind of giving like founding father's swag, which was not my intention whatsoever. Um, but in general, I like her design. I went way harder with the moth theming, even though even the wiki says it's supposed to be more subtle. I'm not really sure how to incorporate the wiki animal stuff, to be honest, and I think that that's pretty clear, but um, I like how she turned out. Uh, again, I changed the way that her, like the stylized X over her hair looks. I did a more realistic scar that she can hide under her hair. Um, um, but I actually really like the stylized X and uh, it's it just doesn't work with the style that I'm drawing them in really. 
So here she is. Um, honestly, I think Vaggie's uh, design changed probably the most dramatically between the pilot and the canon one. And my design is definitely way more like gritty looking. Uh, she looks a lot more like chill and like she's just in more like teenager -y clothes in the actual show. So whether or not you like my version of her, my fan art of her, depends probably on your personal taste. Our next character was a man in his 60s or 70s. He's a heavy drinker, smoker, and gambler. He's themed after magic shows and cards, and is from the 1970s time period. He's grumpy with a deep voice and is a bartender. And this is him in the show. And honestly, when I first saw this design, I really felt like it did not connect to who he is in the actual story at all. Apparently this original design, the cat with wings, was a completely different character called Raz um, that was gifted to Vivzi by her sister. It was for a different webcomic called Zoophobia, and I think that the fact that he was originally a different character with a different name for a different webcomic really shows in his design. I know that there's fandom theories about um, him being like a cat, bat, demon thing um, because it's like too cute for him and like that's like a punishment for him or something. I, I think this is just a fan theory. I was not able to find anywhere where this was really like uh, made canon, uh, certainly not in the show or the pilot, and even on the wiki, the most I was able to find was that apparently at one point the creator during a stream said something about him not liking his form. For me personally, if I was drawing this character and designing him from scratch, this would not be a good enough reason for me to keep him as like a cat with wings, especially because wings have special significance in Has Been Hotel, and with every other character, uh, prominent wings like this imply that they have some association with the angels or they're a fallen angel. So to me it's really weird to give him these wings, it just seems really out of place and it clutters up his design like crazy. I also think that he does not look like he's from the 1970s at all. Everything about his design really reminds me of the early 2000s like emo. Um, the colors, the like bands of black, uh, the like Willy Wonka hat, um, and uh, of course his arm warmers. I mean this is like classic, like early 2000s Gurr, Jonan Vasquez, Johnny the Homicidal Maniac, like this is what it speaks to me. So um, for my redesign, I decided to keep him as an anthro character, um, but I'm making him more like a dog. Uh, I think having that like longer snout would add some more interest to his uh, silhouette and have sort of a different kind of face in Has Been Hotel, um, as well as I am changing up his outfit to look like it's from the 70s. I looked up some cool um, fun kitschy sweaters, sweater vests that were kind of popular in the 70s, as well as these like really big starched collars. Um, so I added both of those and then I made him sort of like a magic cards themed uh, 70s sweater with the Hasbun Hotel color palette. I kept these symbols on him, but I made them more subtle. So like he has a little bite essentially out of his ear that is in the shape of a heart and the patterning of the white on his face turns into a spade as well as he has a little heart on the back of his tail. Oh, and I did change his body type. I think this is a common criticism of this design, but his tiny little waist does not make a lot of sense with his voice or with his characterization. Our next character is a man in his 30s or 40s. He's a radio demon and serial killer with deer ears and antlers. He's from the 1930s time period and is mixed race Creole heritage. And here he is. A white man? No! I'm totally just joking around. I know there's a ton of heat about Alistair and his heritage and his background and whether or not he should have voodoo symbols from the actual religion popping up behind him when he's being spooky scary in the show about a Christian hell. Um, I'm not going to get into any of that. I do not feel qualified. Uh, but that being said, I definitely do think that there is a huge gulf between Alistair on paper and Alistair in the show, which again is not the end of the world. I like lots of stuff that operates more on a rule of cool kind of character design rather than one that is like super tied into like historic time periods and uh, like realistic depictions of various things. I totally understand that, um, but for this video I'm just kind of designing them based on the like on paper character description and that's what I'm going to kind of use as my guiding light for this design. Um, I am going to change his hair and I'm sorry to those of you who hated how I changed his hair last time, it's going to be very similar because I am operating off of reference pictures of Creole men in the 1930s and I don't know how to tell you guys this but 
Alistair's hair does not look like it came out of the 1930s, and if the time period is important to you and you think that that should be a feature in their character design, I have to cut his like emo bob off. I'm sorry. <laughs> it has to be done. I mean, when I look at his hair personally, this is what I see. And I do want to talk about the fact that I said I didn't see the deer elements of his design, but then talked about his ears. What I was trying to say is that his ears don't look like deer ears to me. Um, they look like those tall anime convention ears, kind of like I just showed. Um, they look a lot more like a fox or a wolf. It's very like anthro furry ears and not like a deer. I'm basing my design pretty aggressively off that 1930s time period and uh, because I've made his hair much less voluminous, <laughs> you can actually see his antlers more easily. I do think there's a big problem between has-been super fans and like regular people who just pick up the show from episode one. I think when you're a really hardcore fan and you're in the fandom and you've watched the streams and you've watched the whole show get put together, there are things that are obvious to you that you can see easily that I think a regular person might not be able to see because they don't have all the information that a, a fandom member might have. Um, I think his antlers are a good example of this. Like now that I'm looking for them, I can see them easily. But when I was first watching the show and I didn't know that this was a critical part of his character design, they often blended into his hair and his ears in the background. Same thing with Angel being a spider. I genuinely think that if you weren't told that, you would not know that from watching the show. He's covered in dog-like fur. His uh, other eyes, the pink eyes, look exactly like Cherry Bomb's shoulder freckles. On top of that, he almost always has six limbs like an insect instead of the usual eight. So at its core, that's what I would change if I was in charge of designing these characters from the script. I would try to make sure that all of their important character information is being communicated through their design and in the canon of the show. I've only done four characters so far, and I don't know if I'll do any more. It depends on whether or not that's something you guys are interested in. I do think as a newcomer to Husband Hotel, my experience with the fandom has been pretty negative. I know it's not everyone, but the community in general seems extremely hostile to newcomers who interact with the show casually, and a lot of the content I was finding about it on YouTube are videos of super fans exacerbating drama and targeting specific individuals for criticizing the show or elements that they find problematic. I think it's weird to attack people in order to defend a TV show, and I really don't like that aspect of Hasbin's online community. Like for example, I wanted to talk about all the hate Hasbin was getting in my first video, but I made sure to cover everyone's username so that they didn't get any like backlash from my video. The amount of times I saw people's real handles, their real faces in these Hasbin videos, it seems very deliberate and malicious, like they're intentionally causing backlash on these like random TikTokers um, as a punishment for criticizing the show, and I think that's inexcusable. But all that being said, if you guys really enjoyed this, I will make more. If you want to see something else, please let me know in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much to my wonderful patrons, including Viet, Lil Bunny Baby, Raccoon Jam, The Aidenverse, Scott Wilson, Grexius, Olia, Brandon Stark, CB, Lucy Amajiki, Liv Liv, Salty Jack Rabbit, Raven's Crow, Sauce-a-Lot, t Hill Music, Jabber Dabber Doo, Kadaria, Deadly Nightshade Art, Astral Fox Art, The Expressive Poker Face, Tsubaki, Cutie Pie, Ice Cream Pal, Cola, JJ Jade, and of course, Lip 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 Lip.